And now, it's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. You made me so very happy. I'm so glad you... This is Boomer Life on Sea 650. I'm Joanne Sutton. Thanks for being here today. For the next hour, we're joined by our friends from the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia. CEO Maria Howard is here today with her wealth of knowledge and experience about the society and its programs that are run throughout this province. Maria is no stranger to the disease as well. She shares, like many of us in this room, a very personal connection to dementia. Another reminder that you're not alone. We are all in this phase of life together. So, Maria, I just want to say thanks for being here today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. We always love coming and sharing the show together. Well, we love hearing your stories as well and your contributions. So let's recap a little bit. Last month on the show, we focused on the experience of people living with dementia that were living in remote communities outside of the Lower Mainland. And we also talked about how different dementia care can actually look in some of those communities. We talked about the unique challenges some of those people faced, like our first guest was Heather Inglis. She lives in Ashcroft. She cares for her mother, who is living with dementia. And Heather shared her perspective on the differences and some of the benefits to caring for her mom in a small town as opposed to the big city of Vancouver. Last show, we also spoke with Juanita Little. And Juanita is a registered nurse in Ashcroft who serves a large number of communities all throughout the Kamloops area. She explained what providing health care is like when you're responsible to families throughout such a large region and how she spreads so thin. And we also heard from one of the society's own special events officers, Jen Cameron was in studio. Now, Jen is coordinating the society's coffee break fundraiser taking place throughout the province of BC right now. It's uh, throughout the whole month of September. So if you missed the show, I'd like to remind you that past episodes can always be heard online from our website, cl650.com, or also on the Alzheimer's um, uh, BC website as well. So alzheimersbc.org. So here we are in September. It's World Alzheimer's Month and we're just two days away from September 21, which is celebrated as World Alzheimer's Day. So we're focusing today, the show's main topic is going to be on the personal experiences of people with a connection to Alzheimer's or various dementias. And the society has lined up a star-studded panel of guests for today's show. But I first want to remind our listeners that there is more information about the Alzheimer's Society of BC, as well as a wealth of resources online, alzheimerbc.org. So Maria, maybe you'd like to start us off by introducing the topic of World Alzheimer's Day and let us know why it's so important. Thanks, Joanne. World Alzheimer's Day uh, is, you know, really an international or global um, movement or unity to recognize through many, many countries that it is important to think about um, Alzheimer's disease and uh, other dementias and how we can, um, as a global community, support people who are living with the disease and also their caregivers. And Alzheimer's, you know, is not selective. It it, it is in every country around the world. Um, it touches people in many different ways uh, depending upon their own unique situations and their cultures but but it is still uh, something that that we all we all uh, experience and you know I think many countries have come together um, for a number of years and, and have started to talk about how we as a global community can support and share ideas and and I think people naturally go to the thought about well research and so you know what what research can we share globally that helps each other and builds upon and maybe find some type of a cure or some type of a treatment but it goes beyond research. It goes beyond, again, that global community and how we support people, how we can change our communities to be dementia friendly. What programs and services can we put, um, again, in, in our neighborhoods, in our cities that, that support people who are living with dementia to still be able to have a great quality of life, to be safe, to be able to access the things that are important to them, to support the caregivers who, who you know, spend a lot of their time and energy helping their family or or, or friends, and how do we do that together and, and work on this problem together? So, um, World Alzheimer's Month is really important to to bring that attention about this issue as not just something that happens in the Lower Mainland of BC, but something that happens way beyond our borders. 
Well, it sounds like uh, the entire month of September is quite a fruitful month for the Alzheimer's Society of BC. What can you share with us about the role that, uh, that you will actually play? Uh, because I think one of the key points you just mentioned was the first thing that comes to mind for many of us is research. It's not just research. I think a lot has to do with education as well. It does. And, and I think, you know, in, during World Alzheimer's Month, um, just like almost any month during the year for the Alzheimer's Society, but it is a time that we really... Uh, push, um, you know, and really focus on building awareness and education about what it's like to have Alzheimer's or another dementia and what that means for individuals and what it means for their caregivers and also what we all can do as individuals to support um, people who are living with this. And we do that in a number of different ways. We have a number of different um, communications and publications that are on our website that we encourage people to go through. Uh, It's through coffee break in terms of raising uh, awareness and it's also through events in terms of raising dollars and ensuring that those dollars go back to helping people live in our uh, community in BC to get the support they need as well as to supporting research so that we are looking for a a cure or at least a treatment that would uh, help people. And one of the biggest programs that we've heard about and learned about on this program is called First Link. Yes. It's a helpline. First Link is uh, a program run by the Alzheimer's Society of BC. It's available throughout the province and it is a um, it is an early intervention program that people can either self-refer themselves to or their physician can refer them to if they have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And the program is is aimed at connecting people with the resources and the information they need and the support they need to start to begin this journey. We know that everybody has a different experience depending upon, uh, you know, who they are, their age, uh, the type of dementia they may have. And so it's really important that individuals have as much information as possible, as early as possible, so they can start to make the best decisions for themselves about what it's what their experience is going to be like and how the care that they will need will look like. And so First Link is um, a, a one, one way to, to do that. And we do have a dementia helpline that's associated with First Link that people can call at any time just to ask questions and begin a conversation. Mm-hmm. Great place for me to pass along the number, which is 1-800-936-6033. So we're going to be starting off today's show by speaking firsthand to a person who is actually living with the disease, and that person would be Alec Burden. Now, you might recognize his name. Alec has had a long career in the broadcasting industry here, both radio and TV, and he may be remembered by some of our listeners as the host from Global TV's Alec's Best Bets, the guy with all the travel tips, right? Alec is going to be here to talk... um, Uh, a little bit about his personal experiences living with the disease. It's going to be great to hear from Alex. I think Alex uh, is a really uh, uh, a, a good spokesperson for people living with dementia. He has, you know, um, learned how to adjust his life accordingly, but Alex is still full of life and, and still uh, is out doing many things, which is really what the society is helping uh, people to understand is that while it is really um, shocking to receive a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia, it doesn't mean that uh, enjoyment of life and giving back and contributing to your community community stops. And so uh, it's going to be exciting to hear hear Alec and, and have him share um, his experience with that. And for those of you that aren't watching the podcast, I should let you know Alec is in the studio with us and we can't talk about him as if he's not here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's holding his breath. He's just waiting for his turn. So I, I'm actually really glad that he's joined us in the studio today and I can't wait to hear uh, some of his stories as well. And once we've done that, we're going to be speaking with another guest by the name of Bev Stanwood and Bev is going to be joining us on the phone, I think from her home in Penticton and she'll be able to speak uh, to the experience of a caregiver's personal connection to the disease. I think Bev will share um, a, a story that bounces what, what Alex is going to share with us today. And, and, and that's that um, those uh, care partners, those caregivers who are supporting someone who's living with the with a disease of dementia um, really um, are special people. And they uh, also need lots of support and um, encouragement to go along this journey. And people like Bev um, are just amazing in terms of her, her background as a healthcare professional and as, as a caregiver and she understands what it's like to uh, balance those roles and, and still try to focus on the quality of life. 
Well, I'm interested in hearing the personal connection she has, but I think Bev is also one of our fundraisers. Doesn't she have something to do with the Mount Kilimanjaro Grouse Grind event? Absolutely. She is also, um, in her very busy day, she is a tireless volunteer for the society and helps us raise money for our MKGG, which is a really special event we hold in um, September, on September the 25th, up at Grouse Grind Mountain. Um, I should say up at Grouse Grouse Mountain. Mountain, And and the event actually is people register as, as teams and they can climb the grouse grind and raise money for Alzheimer's. There's also this year going to be what we call the summit stroll where people can come up to the top of Grouse Mountain on the gondola um, and do a really neat stroll up on the top of the mountain. And again, it's all aimed at raising money to help uh, First Link and help research and help people um, who are living with the disease in the province. Mm -hmm. All the programs and services offered by the Alzheimer's Society of BC. So that is the MKGG. It is coming up in just a matter of days. Uh, Someone else who's involved with that program will be our final guest on today's show, and that will be some top brass from the Vancouver Whitecaps Football Club. Uh, Bob Leonard Ducey is joining us. Yes. The Alzheimer's Society of BC is so appreciative of Bob and his family. They have been uh, such committed uh, supporters and volunteers to the society in, in many different ways. Um, Bob certainly has a personal story and, and understands what it's like um, to, to support someone who's living with Alzheimer's and he and his family have really just committed uh, so many um, hours and and resources to supporting us through the white caps and through other many personal ways and we're just so appreciative of him um, helping us to raise awareness about Alzheimer's. Oh, it's great. I look forward to all of this and all of their stories as well and I know that today's star-studded panel of guests are going to be very helpful uh, when sharing all of their experiences. We've got a lot of ground to cover here so stay with us. We'll meet Alec Burden next on Boomer Life on CL 650. Celebrating the Boomer Lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.